Okay, so today we're going to do a little introduction to factoring. Um, the idea of what factoring is, it is the reverse of multiplying. Uh, so, for example, if you were to give um, a problem that simply said multiply, for example, maybe 4x times x plus 5, we all know that we could multiply this easy. You would do the 4x times the x, which is 4x squared, plus 4x times 5, which is 20x. All right, so that's the multiplying, but what we're talking about then is just the other direction. So if you're going to go this order, that is what is factoring. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is kind of going backwards um, in the process of multiplying. Um, and in order to talk about that, we first need to talk about what is called the greatest common factor. So GCF, which is just the shorthand for greatest common factor. Oops. Greatest common factor. Okay, so let me talk about that for a second. The idea about common is obviously uh, what is in common between a group of things. And then a factor are things that go into that term evenly. Uh, so let me just kind of start off with an example. Um, we're going to uh, talk about this actually right away. I'm going to call this example one for this video. Um, what is the GCF for the following Terms. So I've got uh, 27x cubed y, and then I have 9x squared y squared, and then 30x to the fourth. So I've got three separate terms, and the question is all about what is the greatest common factor. Uh, so what it's easiest to think about is always to think about the numbers first. So let's first think about our coefficients. I have 27, 9, and 30. What's in common? What's a common factor? Again, factor is something that divides evenly into this term. So what divides evenly into 27? Well, certainly 9 and 3 both go into 27. Well, 9 also goes in to this 9, so maybe 9 is the greatest common factor. However, you go over here and you look at this 30, 9 does not divide into 30. So you have to be careful. You've got to go um, figure out something that divides into all of them. So in this case, that greatest common factor is 3 for those numbers. 3 divides evenly into all of those. 3 is the biggest one that does it. We tried 9. That didn't work for all three of them. And then you're going to do the same thing for uh, the variables. So look at the x's next. So the next thing that we want to look at uh, is all of the x's. And I'll try to do each one a little bit of a different color so we can think about these separately. So let's look at the x's. The first term has three x's. The second term has two x's. The third term has four x's. That's what those exponents are. x cubed is x times x times x. That's three x's. So in this case, one of them has three, one of them has two, one of them has four. So what's the greatest amount of x's that are in common? Well, certainly at least one x is in common, but that's not the greatest. The greatest would be x squared because all of them have at least two x's. So that's our greatest common factor. And then you do the exact same thing for the y. So you look at all of the y's. First term has one y, second term has two y's, third term, however, has no y's. So what's the greatest common factor? Well, there is no y's in common, so there's no y's that count as the greatest common factor. So our GCF in this problem is the 3x squared. So that's the idea of what greatest common factor is. Now what we should do is go ahead and talk about using that in factoring. So let's talk about the next problem. I'm going to give you another problem. Oops, here we go. And this is going to be the first problem of factor. Okay, so I'll give you a polynomial, and the polynomial I'm going to give is 8x to the fourth plus 4x squared. Now we need to factor this polynomial, and what I mean by that is, uh, just like we talked about a little while ago, undoing the multiplication. It's the backwards of that multiplication. So let's talk for a second about that. Let's look at our two different terms. I definitely have two terms in this polynomial, the 8x to the 4th and the 4x squared. Those are my two terms. So looking at those two terms, what is the greatest common factor? What about 2? The number 2 goes into both 8 and 4, but is that the greatest number that divides into them evenly? No, it definitely it looks like 4 goes into both of them. So you pick the largest number that divides into all of your terms. And then you do the same thing with the x's. Uh, first term has 4x's. Second term has 2x's. So the greatest common factor would be 4x squared. So that's your greatest common factor. What we're going to do is we're factoring that out. So I'm doing a big set of parentheses for what's going to be called the what's left over. Okay. If I take out a 4x squared, 
from this first term right here, what's left over? If I took out a 4 and 2 of the x's, okay, what you're doing by factoring, you're undoing the multiplication, which is just like dividing. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. I took away 2 of the x's, so now there's 2 left, because there was 4. Plus, you do the same thing for the next one. I took 4 divided by 4, that's just 1. I took away both of the x's, so there's no more x's. So when there's absolutely nothing left over, that's a 1. Okay, how do we check our work? Always, 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 you should check your work. Um, so when you're asked to, um, that, this is what I think is my final answer. This is the factor. How do we check? Always multiply. You can just go backwards. So in this case, I'll distribute 4x squared times 2x squared. Well, that'll give me 8x to the fourth. And then 4x squared times 1 is a 4x squared. Was that the original question? Yes. Okay, so that's all we need to do to check our work. So that means this is, in fact, our factored answer.